for this vote in and of itself to wrap up. Uh, my producer, Stephanie Dew, who is down the hall from me uh, here on Capitol Hill, says that the vice president is in the chamber. He's expected to uh, be needed to break this tie, which currently the vote currently stands at 50 to 2. Uh, so he will be the 51st uh, vote on this issue with Senator John McCain of Arizona coming on to the floor to a standing ovation to vote aye. And Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin, an unexpected holdout there at the end in a heated discussion with Senate leadership, casting the very last vote on the Republican side as a yes in this vote to proceed. So what comes next? Well, there will be a couple different uh, votes on things that the Senate has already been discussing, an outright repeal and then the Better Care Act that they unveiled in June. But neither of those are expected to have the votes that they need to pass. So some Something that's been talked about both on uh, K Street as well as here on the Hill as a potentially viable option is what's being called a skinny repeal. And our colleagues at NBC News have done some great reporting on this. What it would do is it would repeal the individual and the employer mandates. It would also repeal the medical device tax, but it wouldn't really touch anything else. Medicaid wouldn't be touched. The Obamacare subsidies wouldn't be touched. Neither would uh, the rest of the Affordable Care Act taxes. That is seen as a way that you could cobble together supports from moderates and conservatives alike because you pe repeal enough, but you leave enough of the funding in place, too, so that you're not seen as pulling out the rug from uh, under any of these specific programs. That process would get you to conference, which would be a battle between the House and the Senate to actually arrive at something that both chambers could then vote on. So we're obviously a long way from the end of this process. The vote today, a symbolic but an important one for Republicans who have talked about this and been pressured by the White House to do this for some time. So, Kay Kayla, you mentioned a skinny repeal here as being uh, now bandied about. So if that happens and they only get rid of the individual mandate, presumably a bunch of people will still drop out of the exchanges if that happens. Has the CBO scored anything like this? It shouldn't be anywhere near the 32 million who would be uninsured on a straight repeal. Uh, but I do wonder how many millions of people who would decide they don't want Obamacare coverage if they're not forced to have it. Well, Kelly, uh, on the CBO front, one of the reasons why the out the uh, full replacement is not expected to, the, to pass is because the amendments that would be brought forth by some of the senators that would be looking to change that uh, would themselves not have been scored by the CBO and would require 60 votes, which the Republicans obviously cannot get with the current composi composition uh, in the Senate right now. So the skinny repeal is seen as the path forward because it is something that not only would be able to fit through the key hole of needing only 50 votes, but is something that is seen as uh, potentially workable with the House. We should note there's, that's not a replacement option. They would still have to figure out in due time exactly what a replacement would look like. And obviously some of the data around the marketplace would, would be like shifting sands as they work that out too. Meanwhile, John Harwood, some masterful maneuvering by Mitch McConnell. We knew he had to thread the needle very carefully. And I think even the late Robert Byrd would be impressed with how he's proceeding with this whole thing, don't you? I think it's very impressive and surprising, especially since uh, Mitch McConnell had seemed to indicate uh, that the process had reached a dead end just a few days ago. Also have to say, it is a victory for President Trump, who has urged them to keep talking. He said in an interview with The Wall Street Journal just a few minutes ago, this is basically a motion to talk, but if we get the motion to talk, uh, we'll be in good shape. And on the question that Kelly was just asking uh, Kayla about the skinny repeal, CBO has indicated that if they just take away the individual mandate, you'd have about 15 million fewer people with health insurance uh, over the next several years. Now, that's partly because of people who would uh, uh, de decide not to buy it, but it's also because as a result of people, healthy people not buying it, uh, you'd have a sicker risk pool, and therefore uh, the premiums would go up for the people who do buy it, and some of those would be pushed off by skyrocketing premiums. So there's multiple problems with it, uh, but it is, as uh, Kayla indicated, at least a way to extend the conversation and kick the can down the road. Doesn't tell you whether they're going to succeed or fail, but it tells you they're still alive. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.